In this video, you'll discover how to create flexible, highly customizable storefronts, mold window systems, and facade assemblies that adapt to any design, no matter the shape or complexity. You'll see how to combine doors, windows, symbols, panels, and wall infills into a single robust door and window assembly, making your workflow more efficient and your designs more versatile. This introduction to the door and window assembly tool assumes that you have a working knowledge of the door and window tools, as well as the concept of object styles. If not, information on these topics can be found in the Online Help and Vectorworks University. In this walkthrough, you'll learn step-by-step -step how to create, customize, and manage door and window assemblies. You'll see how to edit the layout, add units and accessories, and generate reports and tags. Let's get started and see how you can streamline your architectural projects with this powerful tool. There are three ways to create a door and window assembly. The most common way to create a new assembly is to select existing doors and windows, right click on one of the doors or windows in the selection, and select create door and window assembly from the context menu. If you want to place an existing assembly style, select the door and window assembly tool, select the style in the resource selector, and place the assembly in a wall. Finally, if you want to create a custom shaped window or panel, draw a 2D shape on the surface of the wall, select both the shape and the wall, right click on the shape and select create door and window assembly. Let's take a closer look at creating an assembly from existing doors and windows. We'll also use this opportunity to survey the tool preferences. To create a new door and window assembly, lay out the assembly elements by placing doors and windows in a wall. Doors and windows can be styled or unstyled, and frames can abut each other or be spaced apart. If you plan to use a panel, wall infill or symbol within your assembly, use a window as a placeholder and update the unit once the assembly has been created. Select the doors and windows, right click and select create door and window assembly. The door and window assembly preferences will appear. In the general tab, most of the available settings are very similar to settings within the window tool. The size reference can be either overall frame or rough opening or structural opening, depending on your region. And the elevation reference can be either top of frame or bottom of frame. The insert relative to and interior side settings are the same as the window tool as well. The only differences are the last two settings, unit offset reference and default panel style. The unit offset reference specifies how the units within the assembly will align to the assembly frame. All units within the assembly will use this reference. Panels are distinct objects that exhibit smart behaviors and can be used within a door and window assembly. They have similar settings to panels within a curtain wall, but unlike curtain wall panels, they can be styled. That style exists in your resource manager, but it cannot be placed directly in your drawing, only within an assembly. A panel generated automatically within an assembly will use this default panel style. This will occur if you reshape a frame so that a door, symbol, or wall infill is no longer rectangular. When this happens, that unit will be converted to a panel. In the 2D Visualization tab, set the 2D attributes for the door and window assembly. The attributes apply to the frames and 2D graphics of the assembly only. The attributes of the mullions, units, and accessories are edited separately. In the Frames tab, set the width and depth, the shim gaps, the material, and the 3D attributes for the frames. The checkbox at the top of the dialog, Use Unit Provided Frames, allows you to create a door and window assembly 
without merging or removing the existing unit frames. This checkbox is significant because it allows you to create one of two distinct types of assemblies. Check this setting if you're laying out mold or ganged windows and doors, where separate windows and doors are ganged together on site. If you wish to design a storefront, leave the box unchecked to create an overall frame that surrounds the units and replaces the unit frames. Mullions will replace the interior unit frames. The Default Mullions tab creates the default settings for mullions created by the assembly. Like the panel, a mullion is a distinct object that can be styled and used within an assembly. Use a default mullion style to take advantage of predetermined object style settings. Within the Preferences, the Mullion Width setting is grayed out because the location of the units determines the width. If the default mullion style's width is set to by style, and that width does not match the distance between the units, the style width will be overridden and the mullion will be converted to an unstyled mullion. Specify the mullion depth or use the frame depth as the mullion depth. You can choose to create a cap over the mullion, like a curtain wall mullion. The location in assembly setting aligns the mullions either to the center, exterior, or interior of the frame. Use the offset in assembly setting to offset the mullion from that alignment. A positive value moves the mullion toward the exterior, and a negative value moves the mullion toward the interior of the frame. Set both the 2D and 3D attributes for the default mullions. All of these settings can be changed for each individual mullion once the door and window assembly has been created. The Energos tab uses settings similar to the window and door objects. To learn more about Energos, visit the Online Help or Vectorworks University. In the Data tab, set the ID information for the door and window assembly. This ID can be displayed in your drawing using a data tag and applies to the assembly only. The individual units have separate IDs, which you can also report using data tags, as well as within schedules and graphic legends. We will discuss reporting further later in the video. Once you've set the door and window assembly preferences, click OK and create the assembly. If you wish to refine the assembly further, Edit the assembly layout using the button in the OIP, or double-click on the assembly, select Layout in the Edit Door and Window Assembly dialog, and click OK. Within the assembly layout, you'll see that the standard tool palettes have been grayed out, and an assembly-specific tool palette appears. The first tool, Edit Assembly, has three modes. Edit Frames and Mullions, Edit Unit, and Edit Accessory. The first mode has four sub-modes that allow you to edit frames and mullions, as well as add, split, and combine mullions. Select a frame segment using the first sub-mode, and you'll see that you can edit its class and width in the OIP. Each frame segment can have a separate width, but the depth is only editable for the frame as a whole. You can also drag the segment and move its control points. Select a mullion with the same sub-mode, and you'll see that you have more options in the OIP. You can change the style or edit the settings. Use the Delete key to remove the mullion, and the two units will merge into one. Add mullions with the second sub-mode. Click two points at any angle across a single unit or multiple units, and two units will be created. The new units will be the same type as the original one, unless that unit type does not support the new unit shape. If so, a panel will be created. Both the split and combine mullion submodes work in the same way as the edit curtain wall tool. The second mode of the edit assembly tool is the edit unit mode. Select a unit and reshape handles will appear. Drag the different handles to resize the unit, 
and the adjacent units will resize to match. If you wish for a unit to have a fixed size, apply constraints to the unit in the OIP. There's a section called Assembly Constraints, where you can fix the width and height. These width and height constraints are not necessary if a styled unit already has its width or height controlled by the style. Below the Assembly Constraints section in the OIP is a Unit Object Type dropdown. Change the unit's object type to either a window, door, panel, symbol, or wall infill. Next, select an object style or edit its settings. The third mode of the Edit Assembly tool is the Edit Accessories mode. Accessories are lintels, sills, stools, trim, and shutters. Within the door and window assembly, these elements are separate smart objects that can be styled and shared across assemblies. Click the Sill tool and click a frame segment where you want to place a sill. You can shift select multiple segments. In the menu bar, you can choose a style or edit the preferences. The sill object contains most of the same settings as the sill within a window, but it also has settings for its end conditions. You can set the angle and the extension for each end individually, and you can have the edge follow the angle of the adjacent frame segment. Select a style and click the check mark to apply the sill to the segments. The lintel, shutters, stool, and trim all work in the same way. In addition to the various accessory tools, there's also the unit tool. There are three modes, smart insertion mode, standard insertion mode, and interactive insertion mode. Use the smart insertion mode to add units to a frame edge or to swap existing units. Set the unit type, style, and preferences of the unit you'd like to add. To insert a new unit, highlight a frame segment and click to place it on the outside of that segment. If the unit is placed to the side of the frame, it will take the height of that frame segment and the width from the style or preferences. If the unit is placed to the top or bottom of a frame, it will take the width from the frame and the height from the style or preferences. If, on the other hand, you wish to swap one unit with another, select a new unit type and object style, then simply click on the unit you want to replace. You can quickly replace multiple units with this method. With the second mode, Standard Insertion Mode, click any location in the assembly and a new unit will be placed. Any existing units will be split to accommodate the new unit. With the third mode, Interactive Insertion Mode, place a unit by drawing a box using two points. Like the Standard Insertion Mode, existing units will be reshaped to accommodate the new unit. The other tools within the Assembly Tool Palette are Pan, Flyover, and Tape Measure, which are the same as in the Basic Tool Palette, including their keyboard shortcuts. If you wish to change the shape or size of your assembly, you have two methods. First, resize the assembly by dragging its control points. All the units will be resized proportionally. If you want to stretch an assembly, but you don't want all the units to change size, you can use a unit style with a fixed size or constrain the unit within the layout. Second, reshape the assembly using the Reshape tool. Double-click the assembly and select Reshape, or select the assembly and activate the Reshape tool. Drag points and edges, change vertex types, as well as add and subtract points. When reshaping in this manner, only units adjacent to the edited frames will be resized. Once you've created a door and window assembly, you can save it as a style. Right click on the assembly and select New Plugin Style from Unstyled Plugin, or select it from the Style dropdown in the OIP. Select the style's destination in the Resource Manager, and the Style Settings dialog will open. 
The style settings are almost identical to the preferences, except the Edit Door and Window Assembly Layout button is now accessible. Set the layout to be by style, and the width and height parameters will be grayed out since they'll be controlled by the layout. If you simply wish to save the assembly preferences as a style, set the layout to be by instance. To transfer settings from an existing assembly style, use the Import Settings button at the top of each tab in the Style Settings dialog. Once you have an assembly style, you can quickly place multiple instances within walls, just like a window or door style. When a door and window assembly is placed in a wall, wall closures will apply to the assembly, not the individual units. Units will have the same insertion reference within the assembly, but they can be offset individually from that reference. If, for example, you wish for the windows of an assembly to be aligned with the exterior face of the assembly, but you need the in-swing door aligned with the interior face, you can apply an offset to the door. Units will also take on the interior side designation of the assembly. In a top plan view, observe the assembly and unit widgets. Each unit has its own handing widget that can be edited without entering the assembly layout. However, there's only a single interior side widget for the whole assembly. To tag an assembly, use a data tag to label the entire assembly or use subpart mode to tag the units inside the assembly. The default content includes assembly tags as well as door and window tags. You can report data from assemblies as well as their units and frame segments within a worksheet, and you can create graphic legends. To create a schedule or a graphic legend of doors and windows inside an assembly, select Search Within Plugin Objects in the Criteria dialog. To end, here are some examples of assemblies that can be created using the Door and Window Assembly tool. This powerful and flexible tool is applicable to many different projects and construction types. It uses many of the same features and functionalities of the door and window tools, making it easy to incorporate into your workflow. For more information, please check out the Vectorworks University, Online Help, or the Vectorworks AI Assistant, so you can design without limits.